Анна Каренина «Конфликт». Ян unmarried man envied Вронский, because he had relations with the woman whose husband was of high social status. It was considered chic. Uh, if Вронский hadn't been in love with Anna, he would have been proud of this fact. But he did love Anna, and her high position was the source of his despair. His mother, at first, approved these relations, but then she found out that her son, Alexei Vronsky, had refused a post of great importance to his career, only because he wished to remain with his regiment and be able to see Anna. His mother found out that this affair was not that brilliant, great social liaison, but a sort of desperate passion, which might involve him all sorts of foolish situations. That this position, this passion, might destroy them both and people around them. Anna and Vronsky was not playing by the rules. They defied the norms and rules which the society they both were part of had established. In addition to his love, a new sense came to Vronsky, a sense of disgust towards something that he didn't exactly know. Sometimes this sense occurred when he saw Anna's son Sereja. As Tolstoy puts it, this child with his naive outlook on life was the compass which showed them the degree of their divergence from what they knew was right but didn't want to see. In all that mess that Anna so desperately had plunged in, her son Sereja was her weak spot. Having chosen Vronsky, she was at risk uh, to lose her son. Just the thought of it was terrible. Vronsky didn't understand that it was her weak spot. What feeling did Anna have for her husband then? She called him a spiteful machine who could not feel love. She called him false. She made him responsible for everything bad she could find in him, forgiving him nothing because of the terrible thing she had done to him. Leo Tolstoy wrote in his novel War and Peace, we love people not so much for the good they've done us as for the good we've done them. So Anna hated her husband for the harms she had caused to him. Meanwhile, she said to Vronsky, her lover, I'm like a hungry man who has been given food. But what is weird? She could not feed that hunger. She felt unsatisfied. There is a significant scene of horse races where Vronsky competed with his horse Frufru, the mare. An awkward movement, movement of Vronsky had broken the mare's back and the mare was decided to shoot. And Vronsky groaned, what have I done? The race lost and it was my own shameful, unforgivable fault and this dear Unhappy mayor ruined. Oh, what have I done? For the first time in his life, he experienced the worst kind of misfortune, a misfortune that was irretrievable and for which he was himself responsible. That event became an ill omen of the future. Anna saw what had happened at the race. She completely lost her head. She began to flutter like a captured bird. Her behavior was indecent. Karenin was shocked by her behavior. He forced her to leave the race. And on their way home in the carriage, he said that she had behaved improperly. She wasn't able to conceal the despair uh, when one of the riders fell. Karenin didn't call the name of the rider, but he meant Vronsky. He was so frightened to pronounce his name. And at the same time, he sort of begged her, uh, begged her not to tell the truth. I may be mistaken in that case. I'm sorry. 
But Anna confessed to Karenin that she was Vronsky's mistress. What did her husband do then? First, he was thinking about addressing a, ta a challenge to Vronsky, but then he saw no sense of fighting a duel. He, an innocent man, would be killed or wounded? He thought that people, the country, needed him alive as a statesman. His main aim became to safeguard his reputation. He didn't want to divorce either to divorce either because it was impossible to obtain those coarse proofs of his wife's infidelity which the law demanded. It would be a godsend to his enemies and an opportunity for the spreading of scandalous stories about him and the lowering of his high position in society. If he divorced Anna, she would go to live with her lover and profit from her crime. But she and her lover had to be punished. He decided not to divorce her. I may have to be happy, but neither she nor he must be happy. Karenin wrote a letter to Anna where he said to her, The family cannot be broken up at the caprice, the will, and the pleasure, or even the adultery of one of the partners of that marriage, and our life must go on as before. Anna didn't know what to do. What could she find? Where could she find support? She needed moral support. She could find this moral support in her religion, but the religion would say, leave your lover. She wasn't going to do this. Anna had again the same feeling of splitting in two. She also was unsure of Vronsky, his love for her, uh, that he felt her as a burden, uh, that he would leave her because he was young and free. She got annoyed with Vronsky and even mad at him because of her fear. She felt that the position she enjoyed in society and which had appeared so unimportant to her, that this position was precious to her. She would never know the meaning of the freedom of the free love. Anna would never get free of society and its norms, rules and concepts. Vronsky definitely loved Anna and he had sacrificed his career for the sake of their love. I think that Anna didn't realize his sacrifice as well as he didn't realize her sacrifice for the sake of their liaison. Anna considered herself as a fallen woman, a sinner. She waited for punishment from her husband, society, her lover, her son, God. She believed that she deserved to be punished. She said to Vronsky about her husband, if I'd been in his place, I'd long ago have killed, torn to pieces a wife like me and not have called her Anna, ma chère. Anna wondered why other women had lovers and did not suffer as she did. Her friend Betsy Tverskaya explained to Anna that those women didn't know the difference between right and wrong, so their conscience didn't trouble such women. In other words, if people don't distinguish between right and wrong, they don't feel guilty. If they don't feel guilty, they don't worry and they don't instill in themselves and other people, people around them, that they are to be blamed and punished. And society in this case accepts their behavior or at least justifies them. Betsy was candid about this. She said to Anna, You see, one can look at a thing tragically and turn it into a torment, or one can look at it simply and even gaily. Perhaps you are inclined to take things too tragically. When Anna got pregnant, she got to know that she might die. She considered her possible death as the best outcome fair outcome. She said to Vronsky, I shall die, and I am glad I shall die, and set you, as well as myself, free. 
So Anna Karenina herself was the first person to have a conflict with it.